Hey, stat students, how you doing? Time for another video. This one's going to be on randomness. What is it? How can I use it? How can I harness it for my power? We're going to talk about that. All right? First off, before we talk about what randomness is, let's talk about what randomness, what randomness isn't. Okay? What randomness isn't is weird stuff happening. A lot of times, if uh, some strange thing happens, we'll say, wow, that was really random. That's an okay use in English. It's not okay in a stats class or in a math class, though. In a stats class or in a math class, we have very, very specific, uh, we have a very sp specific definition of what random is, and that's not what it is. What random also isn't is pick a number between 1 and 10, or I'm going to choose a random person from this crowd, or I'm going to take a random volunteer from the audience. No, none of those things are random, and there's a reason why they're not random. It's because all three of these things involve my judgment. When I pick a number or I choose an audience member, what I'm doing is I'm using my judgment. And anything that can be influenced by my judgment is not random. Okay? So that's what randomness isn't. Now let's talk about what randomness is. It's an event whose outcome no one knows and no one can influence beforehand. That's really what randomness is. All right? Now, you can predict what probably is going to happen. Uh, for instance, uh, the weather tomorrow. I can, uh, if, if I'm a weather forecaster, I can say there is a 20% uh, chance of rain tomorrow. Okay, I'm, I'm saying that when I've seen these conditions in the past, 20% of the time it rains, 80% of the time it doesn't. Therefore, I'm going to say there's a 20% chance of rain. Do I know it's going to happen? Uh -uh. Got, I, I have absolutely no way of knowing exactly what's going to happen because there's this random piece involved, all right? So, uh, an example, the flip of a coin. I know exactly what my two outcomes might, uh, might be. Don't say it's gonna land on the edge, that never happens, okay? It's either gonna be a head or it's gonna be a tail. Which one is it? <laughs> I don't know. That's the random part, okay? The drawing of a card from a, uh, a shuffled deck. Again, I know as I pick this card, I know there's a one-fourth chance that I'm gonna get uh, a, a spade. I know that there's a 1 out of 13 probability that I can pick an ace. I know that there's a uh, 3 out of 13 probability that I'll get a jack, queen, or king. But until I actually pick up that 7 of hearts, I don't know what card it is. That's because it's a random event. Also, the roll of a die is a really good example uh, of a random event as well. Okay? I know exactly what the outcomes might be. There's six possible outcomes. Which one's it going to be? I don't know. And if I try to like, you know, put it, position it in exactly the, the right way to get a six, well now it's no longer random because now I'm using, I'm, I'm influencing what the outcome's going to be, all right? So, now that we have a good idea of what randomness is, uh, let's talk about why we use it. Well, we use it because it's fair, all right? Uh, in a football game, uh, you flip a coin to figure out who's gonna get the ball first. Now, whoever gets the ball first, they have a serious advantage, all right? So some, some people might say, well, that's not fair. No, actually, it is fair. Because before you flip that coin, nobody had the advantage. Nobody at all. It's only after the coin flip, after the, the results of that particular trial, that you see, okay, well, now the, you know, hopefully the Texans uh, uh, have a, a better shot of, uh, of scoring first. Okay? Uh, another reason that we use random randomness is... For a statistician, it's extremely useful, okay? And it's useful because, remember how I talked about it doesn't involve your judgment? Almost always when you're doing some sort of, some sort of statistical study, you've been working on this study for a while, and you kind of want, you, you want your, your, your experiment to turn out a certain way. Uh, it's very, very important, though, that you not let your judgment and your bias interfere. That's why you have this random piece uh, involved in there, because that way you can take away your own emotions, your own judgments, your own biases, and say, no, 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 no. I'm just going to let kind of, nature play, its, play uh, the, the, the trial out that way. Okay? Now, random variables have a structure. They have a, a particular uh, distribution. The, the data that you get from these random variables have a particular distribution. A lot of times it's really not evident after just a few trials what that distribution is, what the structure is. Sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, for example, I might flip a coin, 
uh, and uh, after I flip that coin ten times, I might get eight heads. Well, if I'm only flipping it eight heads, eight or ten times, I'm not going to say, oh my god, that means it's four times as likely to get a head as it is to get a tail. No, 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 I only flipped it ten times. However, let's say I got a lot of time on my hands and I flip that coin over and over and over. And I do it for like a thousand times. Okay, after that many times, I'm going to expect things to even out, uh, at least to a certain extent. And so I'm going to expect maybe not exactly 50%, but as a matter of fact, probably not exactly 50%, but really close to 50% of the time I'm going to expect to have heads, and really close to 50% of the time I'm going to expect to get tails, if I have a fair coin. Okay? So basically all I'm saying here is, the, the particular distribution of the random variable doesn't become apparent after just a few trials. It takes many, many repetitions before you see, ah, this is what's happening, okay? Now, when you're doing statistical simulations, which is what we're going to be talking about in just a couple minutes, uh, really what you want more than anything else are random numbers, okay? Uh, and uh, so I guess the question is, how do you get random numbers? Well, one popular way of getting random numbers is the way that they get them when they play the lottery. Uh, you, uh, you do the, the, the ping pong ball and the big machine thing where it blows it around and then it comes out a little shoot and they look at it and they go, oh, 52. Uh, that's, that's one way of getting random numbers. It's a very theatrical way. It's also a very cumbersome way because I don't even know what that machine is called, but I sure don't have one. Uh, so, uh, really, the more common way of getting random numbers are by using a calculator or a computer, okay? Now, these are not exactly random numbers. They're pseudo-random numbers. And by pseudo-random, I mean they're using, a lot of them use the clock inside of a calculator or computer to, uh, um, to come up with the numbers. So, it, it's not completely random, but as far as I'm concerned, since I have no way of knowing what number is going to be drawn beforehand, or what number is going to be selected beforehand, it's pretty random uh, from my point of view. Uh, and then there are random number tables, okay? Random number tables, these are the old school method of uh, getting random numbers. Uh, and uh, really, there's only two types of people left in the world that use random number tables. Uh, that is, uh, stats students and stats teachers, okay? And the only reason we use them is because that way I can see what you're doing, okay? So, in real life, when you're doing some sort of simulation, you're not going to use a random number table. No way, okay? When I perform a simulation, uh, I use Excel almost all the time. I'll write out a line uh, that, that, that sort of does one trial on, on one line. I might use several different Excel cells. But, uh, but then I'll do it on one line, and then I'll say, okay, well, let me copy that over 10,000 times. And that way I get 10,000 repetitions, and then you start to see, get a good idea of, uh, 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 of what you're looking for. Um, okay, so I mentioned the simulations a second ago. Let's say we have a question. And let's say our question is, I'll start with something really basic. I'll say, I'm going uh, to flip a coin. And I want to know how many times do I have to flip this coin before I get 10 heads. But let, let's bring it down a little bit. Five heads, okay? And uh, now it could be as few as five flips. I could get head, 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 head. You know, great, okay, only five flips. It could be 100. It's very unlikely, but it could be 100. Um, and you can probably imagine as you think about this, you can think, well, it's probably going to be an average of about 10. Five heads, five tails. And you're right, it would be about 10, the average. Okay, but there's going to be some variation in there. Now, but let's say I'm not all that savvy, and let's say I can't think that it would probably be about 10, and so instead what I want to do is I want to perform this experiment over and over and over. Now, like I said, I could sit there and flip a coin over and over and over and over. Or I could decide I'm going to do a simulation that pretends that I'm flipping a coin. Now, how do I get that random piece about whether it turns out heads or tails? Well, that's where the random number table comes in handy. I'll assign numbers, particular numbers, to the outcome of head or the outcome of tail. Okay? So, what is a simulation? It's something where many outcomes, well, not necessarily many, but at least a couple of outcomes are possible. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we 
either can't or we just don't want to actually perform the experiment ourselves, uh, actually go out and collect data. Uh, and sometimes it's because it's, it's just expensive or it's very time consuming. Um, and then we can't or we really don't want to calculate it mathematically or maybe we don't know how to calculate it mathematically. Okay? So if, those are the, uh, uh, if, if this is the situation you find yourself in, this is where you would perform a, uh, a simulation. And of course, the simulation is based on randomness. Okay? So, here are the steps to a simulation. And let's, again, let's refer to this, uh, um, this uh, scenario of uh, flipping the coin. So, first we identify the event or the component that's going to be repeated. And so in this particular case, the event is going to be flipping that coin. I'm going to repeat that over and over and over and over, okay? Now, how am I going to model the outcome? Well, uh, I'm going to use a random number table. And so I would say, well, I would just choose one digit at a time. You don't have to do it this way, but this is a way to do it. I'm going to choose one digit at a time, and I'm going to say the odd number digits, so one, three, five, seven, nine, those are going to be uh, heads, and the even digits, two, four, six, eight, zero, those are going to be tails, okay? And uh, so that's how I will use my random number table to model the outcome. Then I need to explain how I'm going to simulate the trial, including a clear explanation of the stopping point. So what I would say is, well, I'm going to go through and I'm going to select these random numbers, assign them either head or tail, and then I'm going to stop at the point that I get five heads. Okay, that's what I've said I'm going to do. I'm going to stop at the point when uh, five heads occur. Then I have to specifically state what the response variable is. The response variable is the thing that you're measuring. What am I measuring here? I'm measuring how many flips it takes to get the five heads. So what I'm measuring, my response variable is the number of flips I had to do before I got to my stopping point, before I got to that point where I got, ah, five heads, okay? Then, what do you do? You do it over and over and over and over and over again, uh, and then after you do it over and over and over and over and over again, you look at the response variable. You, you, how did it come out? Wow, you know, five times I only had to flip five, uh, five coins before getting the five heads. Uh, seven times I flipped it six times, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then I would look at that and I'd say, okay, well, what's, what's my mean, okay? The mean is what we're going to be interested in more than anything else. And then finally, after analyzing that response variable, I would need to state the conclusion in the context of the problem. What this means is, state it in a way that your English teacher would understand. Don't say, uh, X bar is 9.5. No, 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 no. What you say is, uh, after performing the simulation a hundred times, uh, it appears that the uh, average number of coin flips necessary to get five heads is 9.6, 9.7, all right? Something like that. That would be a conclusion that is in the, in the correct context. And that's something your English teacher could understand, right? Okay, so now let's look at an example. Let's look at a nice example. Let's look at the example of chocolates. Okay, I've got a box of chocolates here. The chocolates have uh, uh, four different fillings, two each. There's eight chocolates in a box, and the fillings are raspberry, caramel, coconut, and pure chocolate, all right? I love these candies, except for the raspberry kind, okay? I really don't like the raspberry kind. I like raspberries, but it's that, that weird sort of artificial raspberry flavor that ugh, just, I can't stand it. So, as I pick up a chocolate, now, all the candies look perfectly identical, okay? So as I pick up a chocolate, I'm thinking, please, please, let it be one of the kinds that I really like. Don't have that gooey pink stuff on the inside. Give me caramel, give me coconut, give me chocolate, not the pink stuff. Uh, so, that's, that's the, here, this is, okay, I'm, this, my heart's in this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, experiment here. So the question is, how long will it take me to pick one of those horrible raspberry chocolates, okay? How many will I enjoy before I get that nasty one, okay? That's my question. 
So, let's go back through the steps and see how that's going to apply to this particular problem. So, number one, we identify the component, the event that's going to be repeated. Well, the event that's going to be re repeated is me eating chocolates. Okay? I'm going to pick one up. I'm either going to smile or frown. And then, what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to repeat that event over and over and over. Now, you can see already why we're doing a simulation instead of an actual experiment. As much as I love chocolates, I can't do this over and over and over and over and over without just getting sick, as well as shelling out a whole bunch of money, because these are kind of expensive chocolates here. Okay? So this is it's very obvious why a simulation comes in really handy in this particular case. So that's the thing that gets repeated over and over, is my selecting one of the chocolates to be eaten. Okay? How am I going to model the outcome? Well, let's see. We have eight different chocolates, right, in a box. So let's uh, assign digits to each of those chocolates. So I'm going to use my random number table. I'm going to choose one digit at a time. And I'm going to say one through six is going to be non-raspberry, so a good one, OK? Seven and eight, bleh. Now, that's all I need is just those eight digits. So what happens when I get a nine or a zero? I blow it off. Okay, I just ignore those particular random numbers and I go to the next one. Okay? Now, in this particular case, not always, but in this particular case, I'm also going to ignore any repeated number. Okay? And there's a good reason why I'm going to ignore a repeated number, and that's because I can't eat the same chocolate twice. Okay? Once I've picked up chocolate number five and eaten it, it's gone. As much as that saddens me, that chocolate is now gone. So, uh, as I'm going through this, uh, this, this simulation, I have to remember, if I choose chocolate number five in a particular trial, I can't choose that again. Okay. Uh, then, I need to explain how I'm going to simulate the trial. That is to say, uh, uh, what am I going to do and when am I going to stop? Okay. Well, the answer here would be, each trial, it's going to simulate my eating a chocolate, and I'm going to stop when I get to a raspberry filled one. Okay? So I'm going to go through my random number table and I'm going to, you know, non-raspberry, 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 raspberry. Bam! Okay? Then I'm going to stop that particular trial. When I stop the trial, what am I going to do? I'm going to look at my response variable. What's my response variable? It's the number of chocolates that I consumed upon getting to that raspberry one. Okay? That's, that's the, the, uh, that was the original question that was being asked is how many chocolates will I eat or how many chocolates will it take for me to get to one of those raspberry ones? Okay? Then you run a whole bunch of trials. Okay, well, let's run a whole bunch of trials. Here's a random number table. And, uh, okay, now, let's see. What did I say? I said that one through six was going to be non raspberry. I said that seven and eight would be raspberry. And I said that uh, nine and zero I'm, I'm ignoring. Okay? So, just start right over here. Non raspberry, raspberry. Okay, it took me two times. So let me just, I'll label that N and the R, and then I'll say, there's one trial. And then ignore non-raspberry, non-raspberry, raspberry. So I ignore that one, non, non, raspberry. <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? And then, uh, let's see, oh, the fun is over. I got a raspberry in the first one. Okay, uh, I'll try not to take this so personally, sorry. Uh, then uh, non-raspberry, then raspberry. So that took me two. Ignore. Non-raspberry, non-raspberry, raspberry. So it took me three that time. Uh, this time I'm ignoring, ignoring, and then ah, raspberry in the first one. One through six is non-raspberry, right? So this is non-raspberry, but then I have to ignore that because I already ate chocolate number six. And then I ignore that one again, okay? Then I get a non-raspberry, and let's see how this works out. Uh, I'm getting non-raspberry, then ignore, ignore, non-raspberry, 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 and then raspberry. So I ate a whole bunch of chocolate on that one. Okay, so I would continue this, go on and on and on, and uh, I think what I did is I did the simulation ten times. So, what do you do after that? Well, what you do after that is you analyze the response variable. Okay? Uh, and uh, in analyzing the response variable, I got 
two, then three, then one, then two, then three, then one, then... So I'm looking at all these uh, uh, results here, and if I take the average of all those, I get 2.9, okay? So that's, that's the average, and uh, as I just look at these, uh, so the average is about 2.9, about 3, and uh, the median is also 3. It's, it's fairly symmetric, okay? Nothing really jumping out at me there. And so, uh, how, would I con how would I conclude this? How would I explain this to my English teacher? I'd say, well, based on the simulation, I estimate that it will take me an average of 2.9 chocolates to get one with the horrible raspberry filling. Okay? That's my final conclusion to doing this simulation, all right? So, like I said, uh, this is extremely useful because, now, actually, I'll tell you, uh, I did actually simulate this about 10,000 times, and 2.9 is pretty good because what I got was three, exactly three. So, uh, um, this is extremely useful uh, for times when the math is kind of hard to figure out exactly what the... Uh, 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 what this average would be, and also, it, I, I don't want to buy all those chocolates, and I don't, I don't can't consume that much chocolate. Okay, all right. So, uh, okay. Next video: gathering data. Okay, uh, this was actually the first video on gathering data because when you do a simulation, you are getting data. You're not getting real data; you're getting simulated data, but it's data nonetheless. Next time we're doing a, uh, gathering data uh, from doing samples, okay? Uh, samples and bias. And uh, I'll see you then.